It is Wednesday night. Time again for your unmatchable midweek news package from NTA's Top Table. Stand by for news, reviews and interviews served with unique insight. Tonight, President Buhari swears in new INEC National Commissioners as key election dates draw closer. Foul fill. House Committee grills companies involved in the importation of adulterated PMS into Nigeria goes under documents with fine tooth comb. One in, one out. Zamfara Assembly impeaches Deputy Governor. State gets new Deputy Governor. He is a senator. The Northeast in focus as the federal government launches multi sectoral crisis recovery project in the region. Constitution amend amendment to go under the gravel as Senate Committee on the review of the Constitution submits reports. We have details of these and other reports which touch on our everyday life. Don't just take my word for it. Join us on this beat. After all, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. I am Fatima Morbuba and this is News Extra. You're welcome. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and on YouTube channel, NTA News Online. You can also visit our Twitter handle at NTA News Now, Facebook page, NTA Network News, and Instagram, NTA Network, for updates. The Federal Executive Council has approved a revised policy for Nigeria's science technology and innovation sector. Thus sustainable, the country keep pace with new and emerging technological advancement globally. Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Ogbunaya Onu, announced this at a media briefing after the meeting of the council presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. Records show that Nigeria's science, technology and innovation policy was put in place in 2012. Since then, there have been without doubt tremendous advances in the critical economic sector all over the world. And determined to ensure that the country remain in tune with the changing times, the Federal Executive Council considered and approved the revised policy on science, technology and innovation. The main objective is for us to use science, technology and innovation to improve the standard of living of our citizens. And this we can get if our nation becomes more prosperous and our economy uh, is more globally competitive. We would like to see Nigeria uh, using this policy to be one of the top uh, scientific powers in the world. Works and Housing Minister Babatunde Fashola secured the approval of the council for the termination and reaward of contract for the 49 kilometer section of Abaji Cotton Karfe Road as part of the Abuja Lokoja Highway at 56.175 billion naira. The second memo was for the revision of the contract sum of the Afon Aboto or your boundary road in Quara from three billion and sixty million to three billion and three hundred and eleven million uh, to enable the contractor uh, make provision for drains to replace unsuitable material and to reconstruct damaged shoulders of the road as well as accommodate some variation in prices. Meanwhile, the council was formally briefed on the results recently released by the National Bureau of Statistics on the performance of Nigeria's economy in the year 2021. According to the report, uh, Nigeria's GDP grew by 3.4% in 2021, compared to the minus 1.92% in 2020, which is the strongest growth so far recorded in seven years since uh, 2015. 
Uh, what those numbers show is that there's a steady uh, uh, progress that is uh, being uh, made. But whether it is far reaching enough is a different uh, 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 ball game. And that's why you see in, in the National uh, Development Plan 2021 to 2025, we are looking for a growth rate of an average of 5%. Uh, uh, percent. We, we, we haven't gotten there yet, but is beginning to move towards that uh, trajectory. In the meantime, over 2 billion naira revised estimated total cost was approved by the council for the supply of cattle for Taraba State under the emergency agricultural intervention scheme. This is a special emergency intervention that was supposed to have been done in 2018 for states that are being affected by conflicts and insurgency. But due to uh, some reasons and the COVID and other issues, uh, we're just able to bring it to council today. The, the second memo is on the national action uh, plan on human trafficking. This is also a memo that's going to guide our work on how to curb the menace of uh, human trafficking in the country. There are critical stakeholders that have put in their input into the, the document and that policy has been approved by council. The previous National Action Plan against Human Trafficking in Nigeria expired in 2012. And shortly after the council's meeting, President Muhammad Buhari granted audience to the governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano. The governor, who is expected to leave office on the 17th of next month, was on a farewell visit to the state house. Governor Obiano was accompanied on the visit by his wife, Ebele Chuku, from the state house, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Six new national commissioners have been sworn in to fill existing vacancies since the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. President Muhammad Buhari performed the ceremony before presiding over the weekly meeting of the Federal Executive Council. State House correspondent Adam Osambo again reports. The new INEC National Commissioners comprise two returning for a second term in office and four newly appointed, all of them nominated by President Muhammad Buhari and confirmed to be of unquestionable integrity by the Senate after a thorough screening exercise. The returnees are Mohammed Kudu Haruna from Niger State and May Abamuche Mbu from Delta State. Those appointed for the first time are Ukwebu, Kenneth Namdi from Abia, retired Major General Abubakar Modibwalk Ali Adamawa, Professor Roda Habo Gumus Bayelsa, and Sam Olubadego Olumekung on the state. Congratulations. President Muhammad Buhari did not make any further comment at the swearing in ceremony witnessed by Senate President Ahmed Lawan, Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila, as well as the Chairman of the Senate and House Committees on INEC. The new national commissioners are, however, not unmindful of the high expectations of Nigerians and therefore promised to live above board in the discharge of their responsibilities. We feel honored that we've been nominated as national commissioners and we we'll make sure that, uh, you know, we meet the public expectations and the expectations of the president for a free, fair and credible election. We want to assure Nigerians that uh, we will deliver on the, our very, very clean election come 2023. We will key in to the the mission and vision of INEC, and you just saw us taking an oath. So that oath guides us to ensure that Nigerians get the best in INEC. The yearning and aspiration of Nigeria will be fulfilled. Inshallah. For INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the swearing in of the new national commissioners was a good day for the commission. It's coming three days to um, by elections in four states of the federation, and as we plan for the Echita governorship elections and then as we continue to prepare for the 2023 general elections we will go on firing on all cylinders uh, now that we have the full complement of commissioners and Nigerians should expect the best out of the commission founded in 1998 and backed by the 1999 constitution as amended INEC has a mission to serve as independent and effective electoral management body committed to the conduct of free fair transparent and credible elections. This is to sustain Nigeria's democracy and indeed the desired democratic culture. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, with the Bible and Quran in their hands, the new INEC national commissioners have sworn uh, to the oath of allegiance that was in the presidential villa. Mayor Ogidi was at the INEC headquarters and reports that the reception was quite extraordinary because one of the national commissioners has broken a jinx within the INEC workforce. The Costa bus cruised in from the presidential villa to the INEC headquarters. The atmosphere quite welcoming. Door opened. The chairman of INEC emerged. A cheering crowd waiting. I know who you are waiting. It's Ken and not me. The INEC chair told his staff. But who is Ken? I will tell you later. Not a day of long speeches, but orgs and selfies. Six national commissioners, two returning, four new, and a resident electoral commissioner sworn in by the INEC chair. He is Olanye, deployed to Ogun State as resident electoral commissioner. As I welcome the new commissioners, I urge you to deploy your vast knowledge and diverse experiences to the service of the country as unbiased referees. <laughs> Outside the conference hall, there is an encouraging story to tell. That is the story of Ken I earlier promised to tell you. Kenneth Innamdi Okegu was posted to INEC in 1987 as NYC member. Lucky to be retained after service, grew to become a director procurement INEC headquarters Abuja and today is sworn in as INEC national commissioner. First INEC staff, both serving and retired, to be appointed as national commissioner. You know, we have about close to 70,000 staff in INEC. I'm, I'm, the, I'm carrying the burden of those 17,000. If I don't succeed, it's a failure of 17,000 people. It's not just about me. And I will never fail. Hugs and prayers from excited staff to their senior colleague because the jinx broke them. Ray of hope, the chances of them also attaining such height in the career getting brighter. So I'm very happy and I thank Mr. President for this wonderful appointment. And I also want to say that uh, the appointment is a motivation to our next staff. And um, we hope in subsequent appointments, Mr. President will consider uh, our next staff with vast experience who are also versatile in the electoral process to fill in gaps. Ken is keen on making them proud as he bids farewell to his former office in a rather emotion laden mien. But he goes higher, so it's a good news for all. Mien Ogede, NT News. Sure, good news for all. President Muhammad Buhari is expected to sign the long awaited Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2021 this Friday. Other things being equal. Authoritative presidency sources confirm that the president would be performing his duty of assenting assenting to the bill around 12 noon. This is coming after public anxiety had mounted in the last few weeks, as some critical stakeholders and some members of the public have already concluded that the president is withholding assent again. The National Assembly transmitted the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2021 to President Buhari on January 31st, a second time having reportedly revised the bill, which he withheld his assent to for some noted reasons. Even though the president is yet to assent to the re-amended bill more than 20 days after it was transmitted to him. Constitutionally, he has a 30-day window within which he is mandated to either assent or state reasons for not doing so. In another story, the Senate Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 2022 has laid its report before the Senate. National Assembly Correspondent Ignatius Sunko reports that the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, witnessed the laying of the report. It's been hands-on for the Senate Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution. 
After a series of consultations, engagements, and public hearing at both zonal and national centers, the committee led by the Deputy President of the Senate, who is also Chairman of the Committee, Ovie Omoa Gege, has concluded works on the draft copy and led it at plenary. First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, in company of Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn, Dad of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, and other top female government officials were in the chamber to witness the presentation. Mr. President, I assume that she is here with the potential 37 new senators that will come into the Senate following the adoption of... Uh, want to create an affirmative action for more female parliamentarians in both chambers, in the Senate and the House and the state legislatures. Senate passed the Maritime Security Trust Fund Establishment Bill, University Teaching Hospitals Reconstitution of Board Act Amendment Bill, and the Orthopedic Hospital Management Board Act Amendment Bill, the Federal Polytechnic Orozo Establishment Bill, sponsored by Senator Philip Aduda, the Federal Medical Center, Gada, Sokoto State Establishment Bill, by Senator Ibrahim Gobir, and the Federal University Local Jar Teaching Hospital Establishment Bill, by Senator Smart Adeyemi, passed second reading. And to balance the geographical spread of the higher institutions as there exists no polytechnic in the federal capital territory Abuja in the north central. This bill went past. We have no immediate financial burden on the federal government treasury as the facilities for the takeoff of the proposed teaching hospital, Mr. President, uh, is uh, the federal medical uh, center, Lokoja, that will be upgraded to the status of the teaching hospital. Senate, through a motion by Senator Bala Ibn Naala, urged President Muhammad Buhari to deploy more security agencies to parts of KB State battling with mandatory and cattle rustling. The Chief of Defense Staff to establish an operational base within the affected areas with a view to finding lasting solution to the security challenges. Worried by the poor state of maintenance culture in Nigeria, the Senate has begun the consideration of a bill that seeks to provide for mandatory public infrastructure maintenance. This was one of the five bills that were passed for first reading. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Well, the report on 68 bills seeking amendment to some sections of the Constitution is now before the House of Representatives, paving the way for the conduct of voting on each of the bills. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that just as in the Senate, Nigeria's First Lady was in the Green Chamber to witness the exercise. As the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, to provide for the termination of tenure of certain elected officials on account of change of a political party and for their matters. The outcome of the much anticipated constitution review is at hand with the submission of the report by the special ad hoc committee. The thematic areas of the review cover national security, strengthening of institutions and reforms for the judiciary, local governments and electoral matters. Some of the alterations seek power to summon the president or governor for the national and state assemblies, financial autonomy for the legislature, the judiciary and local councils, as well as independent candidature to contest elections. Bills seeking space for more women in decision-making attracted an entourage of Nigeria's First Lady Aisha Buhari to witness the laying of the report. Provide a special seat for women in national and state house assembly and for death matters. Thank you. There's still a lot of work to be done yet. Um, we're still in the process, and there's still a lot of uh, a lobbying, a lot of lobbying to be done on both houses. And uh, by God's grace, we'll get through this one. Voting on the bills will be conducted on the 2nd and 3rd of March, 2022. Other considerations at plenary include the second reading of a bill to establish unclaimed financial assets agency and a bill to establish Federal Medical Center Zuru. Among motions adopted is the need for authorities to deploy fighter jets to parts of Kebi State to combat kidnappers and bandits in their hideouts. Bandits are moving in hundreds from village to village, house to house, in Donkosago and Sakawa local government of Kebi State. 
in search of cattle to rustle, innocent civilians to kidnap, food stuff to set ablaze and women to rape. Also adopted is the motion from Ben Lokawiji appealing for assistance to victims of a recent fire disaster in Bagudu and the motion from Ajibola Moraina seeking development of tourism potentials in Oyo State. Economic activities at the market has virtually been grounded, leaving the victim financially handicapped and emotionally and physiologically distressed. The hills situated in the Dairy Town in the Baraka Central local government area of Oyo State is gradually emerging as a new tourism center as it has been attracting patronage from local and international tourists. House Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila emphasized the need for some sections of the media to desist being mischievous on happenings in Parliament. We don't want mischief makers to misinterpret what happened. Honorable Michelle is one of our uh, very best legislators, one of our good ones. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NC News. And in continuation of her solidarity and support to gender parity, the First Lady Aisha Buhari earlier today took part in Wednesday's plenaries of two chambers of the National Assembly to observe proceedings on issues related to women participation in politics and other decision-making processes. State House Correspondent Aluka Pure has that. Accompanied by the Ministers of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn, and that of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, and other Nigerian women, the First Lady was at the National Assembly to observe the proceedings at both Chambers of Senate and the House of Representatives on issues of national importance. Specifically, the First Lady was concerned of the constitutional view on matters affecting the promotion of women inclusion in all affairs of national development. As submitted by various ad hoc committees of the National Assembly, the review for amendment of the 1999 Constitution on a bill for an act to alter the provisions of the Constitution to, among others, provide reserve quota for women and to also provide special seats for women in the National and State's House of Assembly and to give due consideration for affirmative action for women in political party administration. The First Lady is optimistic that the bill, if passed into law, will go a long way towards enhancing the cause of women for the overall national development. We are here this afternoon to peacefully observe the, the proceedings on constitutional review about women and also to listen to the proceedings also concerning the 35 affirmative action about women and special additional seats for women in the National Assembly. While acknowledging the presence and the doggedness of the First Lady in this direction, President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, and Speaker, House of Representatives, Femi Wajabiamila, assured the First Lady of doing everything possible within the ambit of the law to give due consideration to the bills in the best interest of the nation. This is the first time a serving First Lady of Nigeria is attending plenary session at both chambers of the National Assembly. I am Ali Wukabir. NTA News. Minister of Women Affairs Dame Pollen Talon has congratulated the First Lady, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, and Nigerian women on the historic visit of the First Lady to the Senate Chambers and the House of Representatives to witness the laying of the report of the Constitution Review Committee. The minister also commends the leadership of the 9th National Assembly led by distinguished Senator Dr. Ahmed Lawan and the Speaker, Honorable Femi Bajabiamila. The promises made to the visiting delegation is a true demonstration of the gender sensitivity of the members of the 9th National Assembly as a whole to bring about equity in nation building. Dame Talon praised the Joint Committee on Constitution Review for doing an amazing job in the issues and concerns of women as captured in the final document that was laid before the National Assembly today. She says Nigerian women are confident that the promises made by the leadership of both chambers will be fulfilled and puts Nigeria on the credible path as the true giant of Africa. And President Muhammad Buhari joins all church leaders, members, families and friends to felicitate with Primate of the Church of the Lord Worldwide 
TCLW, Most Reverend Dr. Rufus Akikiola Esitelu, as he turns 70. In a statement, President Buhari rejoices with the TCLW leader, taking into account his many contributions to national development, particularly in education health and infrastructure, and most significantly, consistently upholding the nation in prayers. The president believes the scholarly background of a Dr. Ositalu and many leadership roles he has played as former vice president of Christian Council of Nigeria, amongst other positions, is evident in his position on counseling leaders on programs and policies that directly improve the livelihood of the people. Let's take a short break. When we return, House Grills companies on the importation of foul fuel. Plus, stakeholders brainstorm on energy sufficiency in the ECOWAS subregion. Stay with us. No. Abdullahi Aisli and the entire good people of Nasr State heartily welcome President Muhammad Buhari for a historic two-day working visit on Thursday and Friday, 24th and 25th February 2022, in line with the Aisli mantra of exceeding all expectations. We welcome Mr. President to commission the Lafayette Cargo Airport, Skills and Vocational Institute, Lafayette Bus Terminal. Shinge Kilima Road, the renovated Emir's Palace Lafayette, Central Bank, and the Acroba Power Substation in Lafayette. <laughs> On day two, President Muhammad Buhari will commission the Kefi Square, Kefi Neighborhood Market, and the Karu Ultra Modern Mega Bus Terminal. Mr. President, history beckons. The good people of Nasrallah State and A.A. Sully. The whole sensational world of glow now accessible through one code star triple seven hash. Governor of Borno State, Professor Babagana Umaro Zulum, happily welcomes the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, GCON, to Borno State. During the visit on Thursday, the 24th of February 2022, the Vice President will launch Borno's edition of the Federal Government's Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises Clinic. The Vice President will also commission a shopping complex for MSMEs, quarters for medical doctors, a mega size school, and road network, which are amongst over 500 projects executed by the Zulum administration. Also, Professor Oshibanjo will once again visit the Northeast Children Learning Center, initiated by the Vice President, to provide homes, education, and entrepreneurship skills to 1,500 children, orphaned by insurgency across the Northeast. The people of Kanem Borno are always excited to welcome and host the Vice President. Welcome to Borno State. Wushe Kunshero, Marhaba, Announcer, Honorable Babakura Abajato, Commissioner for Information and Chairman, Publicity Subcommittee. Distinguished candidates, registration for UTME and DE into Nigerian tertiary institutions begins February 19th to March 26, 2022. Each candidate must create a profile using only one mobile phone number. To generate the profile code, simply send your NIN by SMS text to 55019 or 66019. A profile code of 10 characters and IBAS alert is received by the candidate for pre-registration check-in. The profile code is presented to purchase the UTME and DE pin The registration fee is 3,500 Naira for DE stroke UTME form, 500 Naira for reading text, and 700 Naira for CBC center charges. No other payment is required. Multiple registrations are not allowed. You can upgrade your UTME to DE at no cost. DE and UTME close same day and there will be no date extension. Jam, enhancing academic excellence. 
Welcome to Nasarawa State, Mr. President. Mr. President, as we embark on this historic state visit on Thursday, February 24th, 2022, we want to say unequivocally that you have shown great love and affection to our dear Nasarawa State by empowering its citizens. Mr. President, we are grateful and thank you immensely. Barka the Zuagira, Mohammed H. Abdullahi, Honorable Minister, State, Science, Technology, and Innovation. On behalf of all federal government appointees from Nasarawa State, announcer. Capacity building training and skill enhancement gives the youth confidence to do more. One such is the N Hardware Workshop under the N Power Pillar. Bielsa State already has 11,905 in the National Social Intervention Scheme, NSIP. My name is uh, Tele Crawford. I'm from Bias State. Before now, I don't really know what what uh, what development is, and today I'm now a certified Google marketer. Because before now, I was not really having any knowledge about uh, web development. But right now, I have a basic knowledge of web development. The many trainings and other financial gains from the value chain of NSIP have touched the lives of those involved positively. His Excellency Senator Omar Tanko Almakura, former governor of Nasarawa State, heartily rejoices with President Muhammad Bari on his historic two-day walking visit to Nasarawa State on Thursday 24 and Friday 25 February 2022. Mr. President, sir, the people of Nasarawa State are grateful for this imminent love and affection that you have continually extended to the people of the state. I wish you a successful visit to the home of Solid Minerals as you commission some number of projects that will add value to the people of the state. And now, sir, Senator Umaru Tanko Amakura, the architect of modern Nasarawa. And follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and on YouTube channel, NTA News Online. You can also visit our Twitter handle, at NTA News Now, our Facebook page, NTA Network News, and Instagram, NTA Network for updates. The companies involved in the importation of adulterated PMS into Nigeria have been requested to provide backing documents of the origin, quality and quantity of the products in question. The House Committee investigating the matter made the request after receiving oral summary of the delivery by the companies. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. The management of Duke Oil that testification by the oil importation companies on the processes involved gave the committee members an insight into what transfers up to the point of delivery in Nigeria. As we had um, executed was to ensure the quality delivery up to when um, the STS, the ship to ship transfer happened. As a responsible government entity, we are not just in business to make money, but also to guarantee the energy security of our great nation and will never compromise. The committee identified that the whole 37 metric tons of the imported PMS by Duke Oil Company was quarantined while supply by the other companies were stopped by the NNPC after the discovery. We will go through the documents and uh, if there is need for us to call you, we will do that. The committee has resolved to review submissions by the oil importation companies involved. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. Well, thank you, Abdullahi. And the next on News Extra is Business News with Benny Adams. Benny, it's over to you. Thank you, Fatih, and welcome to business. We start by telling you that oil prices took a breather on Wednesday after surging to seven-year highs the previous session as it became clear the first wave of U.S. and European sanctions on Russia for sending troops into eastern Ukraine would not disrupt oil supplies. At the same time, the potential return of more Iranian crude to the market with Tehran and world powers close to reviving a nuclear agreement also kept a lead on prices. 
prices. Brent crude rose 30 cents to $97.14 a barrel after soaring as high as $99.50 on Tuesday, the highest since September 2014. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude features also gained 30 cents to $92.21 a barrel after hitting $96 on Tuesday. And uh, speakers at a colloquium on the Nigerian economy and capital market identified low participation and inadequate knowledge of the market, which hinders the realization of potentials of Nigeria's capital market. However, I express optimism that the ongoing reforms would deepen innovation and a sound regulatory framework. Main that needs to come to fore in terms of this kind of products that is available, not only to, uh, to investors, but even to the issuers to encourage the issuers to want to look towards the capital market or the stock market to raise financing as different from seeking financing through other means. Sector that come from a native of the GDP are not listed. And that's why you do not have the capital market being a representative of the structure of the economy. It's because the economy is largely informal in nature. Trade sector, 16.15%. They are basically artisans. Curriculum is the ending base that drives you know, knowledge. And if the curriculum is faulty, if it's having bearing with a level of development, we are just wasting our time. While speakers there and stakeholders express optimism, investors lost 21.36 billion naira as the all share index dipped by minus eight. 0.08% erases previous day gain. Equities market closed at 47,207.27 basis points. Market capitalization stood at 25.4 trillion naira, while 330.6 million shares valued at 3.4 billion naira were traded in 4,377 deals. Transcop, Fidelity Bank, and Unity Capital led the activity chart, just as Seplat and Airtel Africa topped the market value list. That is business news. News Extra continues with Fatih. Fatih, it's nice doing business with you. Thank you so much. It's nice doing business with you too, Benny. All right. Congestion of the cargoes, which could lead to 98% yard occupancy, is looming within the Tinkan Island port in Lagos. And this development, if not quickly curtailed, could slow down the availability of goods and possible price hike. The suspension of the clearing services by agents and freight forwarders in the Tinkan Island is grounding full operations and the major problem revolves around the introduction of the evaluation system. Michael Olale now tells us all about it. Vibrant Tinkan Island ports look in the Sate on a day when the volume of trade transactions is usually huge. The bone of contention behind this unimaginable atmosphere, according to the clearing agents, is that the evaluation policy has increased duties paid on goods by 300%. A duty that we paid 250 before is going to be paying about 2 million plus. Can you imagine a vehicle of 2006 where you are wearing the clearing cost will now be around 2.6 million? How much are they buying it? So we have suspended all our importation, and you can imagine in a month time, if there's no work going on here, how much government is going to lose? The attendant effect of this development is better imagined than experienced, as business owners here believe it will not only change the spectrum of doing business at the polls, but will negatively impact on cost of items. There are people here that this is the way they are living. If you, if you increase this thing, you begin to lose, you lose your importer, you lose your job. It don't make it things like this, uh, uh, start the automation. One, without carrying along the stakeholders, the critical stakeholders, like the freight forwarders. There is a deliberate effort to resolve the impasse, but the custom service within the ports community is constrained, as changes to the policy can only be effected by the Federal Ministry of Finance. We have been able to marshal out all our needs are to the CS, and he's taking it to Abuja. Maybe before Friday, things will normalize here. The Nigerian Post Authority says measures are in place to ensure that port operations are not totally grounded. If you go around now, you'll see that there are police and MPS security all at the beats, escorting them while they do their protest peacefully and told them this is a national asset. 
they cannot afford to disrupt people that have come here to do their business legitimately. The suspension of services by clearing agents and freight forwarders is not in the interest of the port community. This is because it is coming at a time efforts are on to decongest yard occupancy and reduce turnover time on cargo evacuation. But the big question here is that who pays for the demoraging cure while the strike lasts? In Lagos, Michael Olaleye. One of Nigeria's giants in the provision of digital financial solutions in the country and across Africa, System Spec Limited, has clogged 30 years of its existence. The company is popular for repositioning the financial management system of several companies through its flagship product, Remita, which powers the Treasury Single Account Project. Amaka Owo was at the commemorative press briefing and now reports. Sim Specs Limited is a household name established in 1992 with the aim of developing human capital and financial software products such as Human Manager that revolutionized the payroll and human resources processes, Remita and PayLink. These solutions brought about financial efficiency and transformed the financial ecosystem of various sectors. The managing director, System Specs Limited, John Obaro, says celebrating three decades means it's time to position the future. He also reiterates that System Specs Limited, as an indigenous company, has remained committed to software development, ensure transparency, and easy financial transactions. Our products are Remita, which is an integrated payment and collection platform, Human Manager, which is a comprehensive payroll and HR processing platform, and Payment, an e commerce solution that helps individuals and businesses, especially the informal sector, to request money with a customized link. And the world. He enumerates other activities marking the event. We have remained focused. One thing we've learned to do is practice business with integrity. Part of what that means is that we don't go out to get businesses uh, which we are not qualified for. System Specs Limited has the vision to give Africa its recognition on the global software landscape. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. It's a waste which many detest. An saw and a cocktail for the transmission of disease when mismanaged. Technology has, however, found a way of making use of this waste as a clean source of energy. What is this waste and how can it be converted? Abdullahi Mohammed reports. Finish using this toilet facility and obviously before I entered I paid for the services rendered to me but there is high likelihood that in the very near future those who are managing this facility will have to pay me to deposit my sewage waste here if you don't believe me then come with me shit business is now beyond taking change for each squad the world has forged ahead of these. People now scored is themselves for a reward. You go to some coffee shops in Europe, in Japan, and other areas. Use the toilet in that particular you know, restaurant or coffee shop. They will give you free coffee. But why would you pass out waste and get rewarded? This waste or this sewage that you are seeing is a resource. So we are working tirelessly with our development partners to institute and also institutionalize a scientific way of managing this sewage. The sewage waste has now become a gold mine because of its capacity to be converted to a reliable source of energy. If that is the case, a puzzle is to be sorted out here. How can households convert their sewage waste to energy? That took me to the comfort zone of an associate professor in the field of renewable energy. He says it's no rocket science, but a simple collection and heating process which translates to methane gas. In simple terms, these energy resources 
can readily be converted into biogas and used on site at the domestic, uh, domestic level. So that means uh, individual houses or group of houses or even uh, municipal uh, houses or municipal uh, setup can actually utilize this important uh, form of uh, energy. I thereafter met Beliamen, who is among the new breed of farmers building back the rice and maize pyramid. Fertilizer, he says, remained a critical ingredient driving the success of Nigeria's agricultural revolution. Price of fertilizer is skyrocketing. His frustration left me with a bell ringing in my ear. So I went back to the associate professor who says Nigeria can leverage on sewage waste to meet the fertilizer needs of its farmers. Nigeria has a potential of about 88 million tons of uh, this biogas, uh, sorry, this biofertilizer per annum, 88 million tons. And this quantity is equivalent to almost what was used then for, over, for about 10 years what the uh, synthetic fertilizer we imported. When I left the associate professor, I kept wondering why open defecation? Why Western sewage waste to the detriment of humanity? And why not adopt the sewage waste to energy system to boost our commitment to a healthier source of energy? In Abuja, Abdullahi Mohammed, NTA News. Lovely questions, Abdullahi. Why? Well, we know the answer. The Academic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, has commenced the construction of a regional power line to connect member states under the West African power pool. Joshua Jito reports that at the flag of, of construction in Niger Republic, member countries restated commitment to the implementation of the project, which will increase access to electricity and boost the economy of the sub-region. 875 kilometers power line to be constructed across ECOWAS member countries to achieve unified electricity market for energy sufficiency in the sub-region. <laughs> Foundation lead in Gondubanda at the outskirts of Nieme, Niger Republic to commence construction of the power line. Nigeria's Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliyu, and his counterpart of defense, who represented President Muhammadu Buhari, joined ECOWAS chairman and Ghanaian president, as well as Niger president, to flag off the project. $568 million is to be expended on the project, which African Development Bank, World Bank, French Development Agency, and NEPAD are financing. At the opening of the 33rd session of ECOWAS West African Power Pool Ministerial Meeting, Nigeria restates its commitment to ensuring that the sub-regional electricity project is completed. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. And we head to Lagos now. She Limited, the leading manufacturing company in yogurt and juice in Nigeria, has introduced Chivita Smart Malt Drink, the first still drink for children. Managing Director Chi Limited, while launching the new brand of product, said the nourishing malt drink will drive energy to learn and play in children. Abaladi Salami reports. Limited, a company that prides itself with a standing records in the production of fortified juice and yogurt drinks has continued to maintain its leadership position in ensuring the satisfaction of customers through its numerous brands of products in a bid to encourage the intake of drinks rich in vitality and nutrients to build good body metabolism in children. She Limited has introduced into the Nigerian market a 125 milligram sized plastic malt taste drink made from natural extracts with vitamins A, B2 and B6. It's an important opportunity for a healthy, a healthy drink, for, for especially for growing up children. This is a great opportunity to give them a healthy uh, beverage which 
is in the end how you grow the next generation. As you may know, uh, with our brands Chivita and Hollandia, we already have a massive reach around the country. And what we've done is to also present, you know, malt drink in the form that children will really, really enjoy. You know, that really meets the need, you know, of this uh, unique set of consumer. The smart malt drink, according to management of Chi Limited, will build the needed energy in children and make them smarter. The product is a steel malt beverage. There is no other beverage product in this, in this country that is steel malt. All other beverage products are carbonated. In other words, they have gas or they have fizz, as some people may want to call it. But this is a steel malt beverage. I've tasted the product myself. Not only is it great for kids, it's also great for adults. So it's obviously a product for everybody. As a consumer-centric brand, Chivita is concerned about the well-being of our consumers and and this time around, we are focusing our attention on our kids, bringing nutrition, good nutrition for our kids. As a leading company with over 40 years' experience in the production of high-quality fruits and beverages, Chi Limited is constantly breaking boundaries and creating new frontiers. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. The Inspector General of Police, Usman Al Ali Baba, has ordered the immediate distribution of police uniforms kits and accoutrements which are the force recently procured to various zones, commands and formations in the force for onward issuance to personnel. A statement by the force indicates that the resuscitation of the quarterly issuance of uniforms and other accoutrements to officers and men of the force is in furtherance of the ongoing efforts by the IGP to engender reforms and evolve a new people-friendly police force. The issuance of the new uniforms and accoutrements, which is a continuous exercise, is free of charge as provisions have been made for the continuous procurement in the police budget. The IGP therefore charged police personnel to imbibe the habit of proper and clean turnout in order to uphold the sanctity and professionalism in the force as efforts are being made continually improve on the condition of service of all personnel of the force across board. We'll take a breather now in the next segment. It is a case of revolving doors in the office of the Deputy Governor of the First State. One goes out, one comes in. All today. Now too much Brekete Plus Plus is here. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New Glow customers will get 1,000 Nara welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow SIM today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. The Nigeria Association of Women Journalists Nawaj cordially invites you to its 32nd anniversary with a theme, Leadership with a Difference, setting the pace for a better future. Scheduled for Thursday, February 24th, 2022. Time, 1 p.m. prompt. Venue, International Conference Center, Abuja. Special guest of honor, Her Excellency Dr. Aisha Muhammad Buhari, First Lady of Nigeria. Guest speaker, Professor Umaru Pate, Vice Chancellor of Federal University, Kashiri Gumbe State. High point of the event will feature confirmant of Achievers Award to the First Lady and other distinguished Nigerians. Announcer, Ladi Bala, National President. Join over 700,000 satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium Pension. Active today. Premium tomorrow. 
Oga, are you also here for a First Bank Rev debit card? <laughs> Almost everybody here, Izo. Everybody is running to win in the First Bank Rev card transact that win promo too now. To win a brand new car and weekly prizes, transact with your Verve debit card between two to four times weekly and a minimum of eight times monthly on POS, web or ATM channels in February and March. The First Bank Verb Transact and Win promo runs from February 2nd to March 30th, 2022. Visit www.firstbanknigeria.com for more information. Terms and conditions apply. See, nurse, she's saying she feels unwell, despite my efforts to practice good hygiene. Mom says wash your hands to keep the germs away. Washing hands is good, but surfaces can also have germs, and you shouldn't use just anything for cleaning them. Use Jig. Jig's formula has been scientifically proven to stay active for longer, giving you whitening and germ kill protection on a variety of surfaces. Disinfect to protect, just jig it. Endorsed by National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives. One, two, three! There is no doubt about it. Trees and other plants are so admirable and they produce productive farmlands and water. Imagine this colossal damage. No lands. Legs are gone. Houses wash away. Migration is imminent. All this as a result of desertification. We must fight desertification by planting more and more trees to save our lands and restore the glory of our agriculture. These will ensure a sustainable food sufficiency, adequate flow of water and peace of mind. This message is from the National Agency for Great Green Wall. Thanks for being there. Member of the All Progressives Congress and publisher, Blueprint Newspapers, Mohamed Idris Malagi has donated the sum of 43 million and 31 Sharon buses to the party in Niger State. The donor, Idris Malagi, says the gesture is to support APC activities in the state for success. Fatima Ali reports. The state All Progressive Congress Secretary Timina was a beehive of activities as party festivals from all the 25 local government areas converge to receive the donation of 31 Sharon buses and the sum of 43 million naira to boost the activities of the party in the state. Of the 43 million naira and 31 buses donated, each of the 25 local government party secretaries received a Sharon bus and 1 million naira, while the 30 senatorial districts got 3 million naira and 30 Sharon buses. The state office of the party was given 15 million naira and 30 Sharon buses. The donor and publisher, Blueprint newspaper, Mohamed Idris Malagi, who congratulated the new leadership of the party in the state, said the benevolence is to enhance the activities of the party in the state and wax it stronger. As loyal party members, we will continue to give all of your support so that the idea for which the APC is known for will be carried to the letter. We will also continue to give women and the youth the proper attention that they so deserve. We recognize the fact that we cannot run a successful democracy or any political program without meaningful inclusion of women and youth across board. Mohamed Idris Malagi also shared in the pains of the communities affected by the activities of terrorists in parts of the state. I want to also, Mr. Chairman, share with you the pain and the agony of our people in the role of the government and other places where bandits and terrorists are threatening the peace and threatening the very existence for which neither state is known for. We pray that through this party, Allah will provide us a way to ensure 
that this thing has become a thing of the past. State APC Party Chairman Ali Ruzakari Jikantoro and other executives appreciated the gesture, describing it as indelible, saying it will serve as a unifying factor among party members of the state and give it more dignifying bearing. Emina Fatima Aliu, NTA News. So far, State Chief Judge Justice Kulu Aliu has sworn in Senator Hassan Mohamed Gusau as the new Deputy Governor of the state. This followed the confirmation of his nomination by the State House of Assembly shortly after the impeachment of his predecessor, Mahadi Aliu Gusau. Jamilu Ibrahim has the details. The process for the impeachment of the Zamfara State Deputy Governor Mahadi Ali Ugusa, which began barely three weeks ago, has eventually come to an end with the submission of a report to the State House of Assembly by a seven-man panel constituted by the State Chief Judge to investigate the allegations of gross misconduct against him. Speaker of the Assembly, Nasuru Maazu Magaria, who read the findings of the committee at the plenary, said the investigative panel found the embattled Deputy Governor guilty of all the charges leveled against him. This prompted the clerk to the House, Shio Saidwa, to instantly constitute a voting panel, after which 20 out of the 22 members of the Assembly voted in favor of the impeachment of the Deputy Governor. By prohibition of the law, the Deputy Governor of the Empire State, Pakistan Mahadi Alu Muhammad Gusau, being guilty of gross misconduct, is removed from office for on today, 23rd day of uh, February 2022. Just as what we say, I, against Sini, as I have served. The seven-man panel that investigated the allegations against the impeached deputy governor led by retired Justice Halu Tonkosoba had concluded its sitting on Tuesday this week as seven-man witnesses testified before the committee. The impeached deputy governor, however, shunned the panel on a premise that it was illegally constituted. Meanwhile, Zamfara State Chief Judge Justice Kulu Aliyu has sworn in Senator Hassan Muhammad Gusau as the new state deputy governor. This followed the confirmation of his nomination by the State House of Assembly shortly after impeaching his predecessor. Until his nomination, the new Zamfara State Deputy Governor is the National Assembly member representing Zamfara Central Senatorial District in Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Federal High Court in Abuja has ordered the interim forfeiture of about 10 properties and funds in banks allegedly owned by the former governor of Zamfara State, Abdul Aziz Yari. Justice Obiora Egwatu gave the order while ruling in an ex parte application by Osuo Ben Ekwoi, counsel to the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC. Justice Egwatu said of the interim order granted would last for 60 days to enable the ICPC conclude its investigation, following which the commission could apply for final forfeiture. The court also ordered the ICPC to publicize the order for any person or persons with interest in the affected properties to show cause within 14 days why they should not be permanently forfeited to the federal government. Some of the properties, according to the ICPC, are in Maryland, USA, Abuja, Kaduna, among others. Three states of the Northeast region are currently being earmarked for the implementation of major intervention projects under the Multisectoral Crisis Recovery Project and Additional Financing Scheme. This came to the fore during the official launch of the project and performance assessment of previous interventions aimed at stabilizing and rebuilding the region. Abakar Usmana Kwanga reports. East region has suffered economic and social pressure from the activities of the Boko Haram insurgents leading to mass exodus of inhabitants and monumental damage to property. To resettle and recover greater percentage of displaced persons and wealth lost to the social unrest, a new project is being launched with additional financing assisted by the World Bank. The Commission has been working on the Northeast Development and Stabilization Master Plan. This takes into consideration the various projects and plans already ongoing, of which the MCR fee plays a big part. 
we need to continue to maintain our strategic focus on, uh, you know, on the activities on the ground, on being sustainable. This is why uh, the other three countries, Niger, Chad and Cameroon, have been looking at us and how we've been doing this. The project aims to facilitate improved performance, not only by building back better infrastructure, but ensuring that the quality of services provided is raised. Regional collaboration and coordination, the silting of the Lake Chad Basin and Nigeria's strategic position in Prolac through the new VISTA are some of the potent tools required for the stabilization drive in the region. Assurances here are made by frontline organizations with commitment to achieving greater results and prospects as the project sets to commence in no distance time from now in states of Bernou, Adamawa and Yobi. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NTA News. Uh, the Director General National Council for Arts and Culture, Otumba Olusegun Ronshewe, has pledged stronger ties with the, with the Bulgarian government in the area of marketing their rich cultural heritage. The Director General made this pledge in his office when he hosted the Ambassador Extraordinary of the Republic of Bulgaria in his office. Ranshawe revealed that the Republic of Bulgaria has featured regularly in the International Arts and Crafts INAC Expo. At the annual program of the NCAC aimed at showcasing their arts and crafts of different countries to the world. Otumba Ranshawe promised to make this year's INAC Expo bigger and better and promised to use the event to cement the existing relationship between Nigeria and the Republic of Bulgaria. The Ambassador Extraordinary of the Republic of Bulgaria, Yanko Yordano, said he was in the Council to seek cooperation between his country and Nigeria through the National Council for Arts and Culture and to present the symbol of their cultural heritage to the council. He revealed that the cultural relationship between Algeria and Bulgaria dates back to 1964. Yanko, however, solicited the cooperation of the council in putting together activities in addition to the INAC Expo that will not only showcase both also market the structural heritage of both countries and create room for cultural diplomacy amongst both countries. And the first segment of the news, Council on Digital Economy in the works. Plus, Brazil partners Nigeria with the zeal to combat COVID-19. We'll be right back. All washing powders are the same. Sunlight adds bursts of freshness to cleaning power to give you sunlight two in one. For sensational cleaning and freshness that lasts. Two in one sensational cleaning with burst after burst of freshness. Introducing Sunlight with Luxurious Oud Fragrance. How did I get here? It all started shortly after I graduated from MSTC, the Model Skills Training Center with a certificate in ICT. I successfully developed a data management program that has been called the software of the future. Thanks to its success, everyone wants it. And as you can see, now everyone wants me. But I'm not alone. The skills training programs at MSTC are equipping young Nigerians to become the next big success story. Whether it's ICT, mechatronics, facility technology, electronics and computer networking, or culinary studies, a certificate at MSTC is the way of the future. And just like me, there he is. Everyone will want you to. ITF, developing the nation's human resource. Nelson Mandela once said, Sports has the power to change the world, and that mission starts this week in Nigeria with an international gathering of legends and experts in sports and diplomacy, featuring legendary African-American Olympian Ron Freeman, international African-American coach Ron Davis, Nigerian-American foremost sports marketer Idoreye Uyo, and Tanzanian-American historian and diplomatic expert Professor Ekowemba Banten, they are all on a common mission 
to change the world with the power of sports and diplomacy. The meets in Lagos, Nigeria, for the mother of all conversations at the main auditorium of the Nigerian Institute for International Affairs, Gofo Abayomi Street, Victoria Island, Lagos. Date Thursday, February 24, 2022, from 11 in the morning. This is powered by the Nigerian Television Authority, the National Council for Arts and Culture, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, and the Nigerian Institute for International Affairs. Announcer, Ambassador Olusegun Odebami. Watford will seek to do a double over the Red Devils when they travel to Old Trafford this weekend. It's Manchester United versus Watford on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Babai Debu, empowered by Integral. Good to have you back. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and our YouTube channel, NT News Online. You can also visit our Twitter handle at NT News Now, Facebook page, NT Network News, and Instagram, NT Network for updates. A leveraging on the potential of Nigeria in the digital space for economic growth and national image is a task for all stakeholders. Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Ali Pantami, who started this at an interactive session in Lagos, also said government is to establish a national council to maximize benefits derivable in the sector. Samuel Johnson reports. The world is digital. The interactive session with industry players in attendance is for the minister to have open discussion and profess solution to the identified problems. From infrastructure to cost of production including data, speakers at the event believe that government regulatory agencies and the private sector need more collaboration for Nigeria to excel in information communication technology. The government has made a lot of progress on ease of doing business in Nigeria. There's a digital aspect that we can put in there of ease of doing business to transform the digital economy. Right now, some, the regulators are working in silos and sometimes they are stifling innovation because they are over-regulating. What is happening around the world in the, in the, in, in the postal community is about digitization. From the perspective of uh, regulatory intervention, by the NCC, you know, we're doing a lot to spur the growth of startups. While commending the digital innovation experts for complementing government's efforts at providing jobs for the teaming youth, the minister assured participants that the Council on Digital Economy being considered would address all issues raised at the session. Having a national Digital Innovation and Entrepreneurship Council to be chaired by Mr. President. All the issues we raised here, whether regulatory issues, whether the issue of taxation, issue of security institutions, and many more, all these important institutions are part and parcel of the council. The minister's team also interacted with some ICT support outfits in Lagos. Samuel Johnson. NTA News. Connecting the world in combating the ravaging impact of coronavirus and other diseases affecting humanity is making headway as more partnership come the way of Nigeria to strengthen technology transfer and research. The latest by the Federative Republic of Brazil, Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation set in motion agenda at a meeting between the minister astronaut Marcos Pontes and ambassadors of three African countries, including that of Nigeria, Professor Mohamed Ahmed Magarfi. Salima Rugachman reports. The two other ambassadors at the meeting were that of Algeria, Rachid Buladihani, and Martin Abo Bank of Cameroon, in addition to President of Global New Economy Forum, Victor Borges, and Brazil's Chief Executive Officer of Diplomacia, Business Elna Souza. Following development of strategies by a special committee of experts to combat the pandemic in Brazil, the meeting considers the urgency to share research and technologies with the African countries. Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, astronaut Marcos Pontes, 
highlight initiatives by Brazil since the outbreak of the pandemic to include production of diagnostic tests, respirators, and development of National Technology Center of Vaccines. President Global New Economy Forum praises the initiative, saying it is laying foundation for humanity to defeat the virus. Nigerian Ambassador to Brazil, Professor Muhammad Ahmad Makarpi, and his colleagues highlighting challenges posed by the pandemic and importance of scientific research to them, agreed to hold technical meetings for presentation of findings to Africa researchers on the pandemic. Sulema Rigachkun, NTA News. To ensure that older persons in the country live a life of peace, dignity and respect, the National Senior Citizens Centre is walking the talk by taking the advocacy to communities. Ruth Aguela reports that the Director General, Dr. M. M. Omokaru, led a delegation with its partners to the palace of the Sapei of Gurki in their city to seek support on ways to prevent remedy and redress issues of elder abuse. The sound of the flute heralding the entrance of the Royal Highness, the Sapei of Gurki in the Federal Capital Territory. It is a new done for all the persons in the community as the National Senior Citizen Center has come with its delegation to interact with the people, find out areas of diverse concerns of older persons, seek support, and provide solutions in protecting the rights of older persons from abuse and neglect. You have mechanisms, systems in place that you deal with things that concern older people. So what NACC is doing is that we go into a community we look at the traditional things that are already in place so that you can continue to strengthen the dignity of older people. The National Organization Agency, as a crucial and strategic partner, is also here to let everyone know that the elderly are as much part of us as we are part of them. For the Royal Highness, restoring values in society requires a collective effort. And all of us are the cause of our problem. We have swept all our tradition, culture, norms, and values under the carpet. So we must have to reflect back. If we want tomorrow, we want future to be good for our younger ones. As the advocacy continues, it is expected that this innovative multi-sectoral mechanism will help remedy and redress elder abuse in communities. In Abuja, Ruth Aguela. NT News. Now to the mysteries of our world. 22-02-2022. A Tuesday to remember. Should we call it a double date or as it's rightfully called a palindrome? Does the date ring a bell and is there any mystic significance attached to it? and others like it. Well, Naja Atitijani did a bit of sleuthing and this is what she found out. Today is Tuesday. I'm not talking about the day of the week. I'm talking about a day full of twos, literally. 22-02-2022. This is called a palindrome. And not only does it read the same, whether you look at it on the right, but when you look at it backwards as well, it gives you the same date. Apart from being a palindrome and an ambigram, February 22 is also a two-day. Yes, two-day as the number two is repeated several times on the date. For starters, the year is 2022. It's also the second month of the year, and the date, 22nd, also falls on the second working day of the week, Tuesday. Seeing how rare such an occurrence is, the next one is expected to be in the year 2222. Could there be any spiritual significance attached to the date? 22 to 2022, to us as Muslims, has no any special significance. So there are some people that were born 60, 66. There are some people that were born 5, 5, 55. Was there anything special about it? There's nothing about that. And uh, because we are naturally uh, used to a lot of superstition. That day is uh, really a special day. And uh, many people use that uh, day to pray for other people for special things to happen to their lives. I cannot really say there is much spiritual significance from the scriptures, 
but I can say that whatever that God allows is with a purpose. And that that even number has showed up. And I want to use the liberty of faith to declare that God shall make everything even in your life. And let's stop being superstitious about it. Such dates are quite rare every millennium. And this millennium will have only 60 palindromic dates. If you're superstitious or believe in luck, you don't have to wait 200 years for the next palindrome or ambigram. Mark your calendars as this week is palindrome week. Najaa Tutajani, NTA News. Thank you so much, Naja. In the concluding part of the news, we have our usual spot for sports. Magic Urban and Family. Proudly sponsored by Biggie Drinks, Nigel's favorite, and Binance. Exchange the world. Watford will seek to do a double over the Red Devils when they travel to Old Trafford this weekend. It's Manchester United versus Watford on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 3.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Babai Debu, empowered by Integral. Welcome. Nigeria and Jamaica, two different worlds geographically, yet so close on many fronts. Diplomacy and concerns over development aspirations have further brought Nigeria and her Caribbean partner much closer. Foreign a desk correspondent Usma Ali reports on this and their new ties. It isn't just the stunning scenery, the magnificent taste of Jamaica's cuisine, or the reggae music of Kingston City that leaves the unforgettable memory for everyone who visits that Caribbean island nation. Just like Nigeria, that shares so much in common with Jamaica, the variety of lifestyle, the lush of living and experiencing life at the fullest is definitely life transformative. The experience of traveling to Jamaica or to Nigeria from that country is another ball game. It requires that the intending tourist will crisscross several cities in Europe or the United States before getting to Kingston. But now all of that is water under the bridge. A trip from Nigeria to Jamaica is now reduced to a 10 hour direct flight and the inaugural flight was what brought Jamaica's Minister of Foreign Affairs to Nigeria for the Joint Commission engagement. It's also a destination of choice for a number of Nigerians for, um, you know, to get married. So the romantic side of, uh, of things uh, is certainly there. And, uh, and of course, while I was also there, we were taken to see um, a, um, a heart hospital that uh, actually set up and run by, by a Nigerian. Now that Minister Oneyama has shared with you what a wonderful destination it is for romantic and other, of course, <laughs> more practical reasons such as engagement in trade, in commerce and cultural exchange. The convergence here provides significant illustration between the Caribbean nation, Jamaica and Nigeria, making it a new package of hope and aspiration as both countries have roots in culture and history. Jamaicans are mostly of sub-Saharan Africa descent and so the connection with Nigeria is another anticipation for better growth of partnership opportunities. Usman Aliu, NTA News. Amazing. Next is Sports Update. 
Esther Okoronko struck on 87 minutes as 11-time champion Super Falcons of Nigeria booked their place in the 2022 Africa Women's Cup of Nations after beating the Lady Elephants of Cote d'Ivoire 1-0 in the second leg final qualifier in Abidjan Wednesday evening. Goalkeeper Chiamaka Nadozier saved a penalty in the 33rd minute to ensure that the Falcons maintained their first leg 2-0 victory to finish the double header on a 3-0 aggregate. <laughs> Semi-finalists at the 2022 Africa Women's Cup of Nations, billed for July 2 to 23, 2022 in Morocco, will represent the continent at the 32-team 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup, scheduled to take place from July 20 to August 20, 2023 in Australia and New Zealand. Meanwhile, over 130 athletes from 20 states are set to compete in the second edition of Rear Admiral Pobeni National Belt Race, which begins on Thursday at the Jabib Lake, Abuja. The three-day competition is part of efforts by the Federation to integrate water sports in the country. We found out that it has been difficult to energize the youths, so we now decided that this must be held. For example, after the Morocco game where we had our African games, athletes are qualified, had no other competition game for the uh, Olympics, so we now put this in between. This is the um, 2020 edition. It's an annual program. It's open to all the states and um, apart from the few numbers of states that we have represented here now, we've um, always had like about 22 um, states to be part of it. Cynthia Ogun reports that stakeholders are calling on corporate bodies and well-meaning individuals to embrace the vision of the landmark event. That sports update. I am Kenen Ima Aburike. And let's look at our other weather update for tomorrow, Thursday. You're welcome once more. We have this band of dust plume over North Africa emanating from two extratropical weather systems. We expect this plume to move southwards and affect us by Thursday. And so we expect dust haze to prevail over the north and the central states. We expect slightly better horizontal visibility so over the north in the morning. But we expect this visibility to deteriorate and get poorer as the day progresses. Visibility should be fine for the central states. It will be hazy to the south. We also expect increased cloudiness over the south. And we have some prospects of isolated thunderstorms over parts of Cross River. Rivers, Bayosa, and Delta. Well, with the weather report, we conclude News Extra for tonight. Thank you so much for being a part of it. But before we go, remember to join NCA in the crusade against rape and rapists. I am Fatima Omar Enjoy the rest of your night.